Basic Local Illumination The classic local illumination model has three parameters, ambient, diffuse, and specular. The ambient term represents indirect light which is reflected off other objects, and the diffuse and specular terms represent light which comes directly from a light source. We will cover the actual equations later. In global illumination, light is propagated off all surfaces in the scene to get the illumination at each point. As expected, the process is time-consuming. With local illumination, we assume all objects receive a constant amount of light from surface reflections. This constant is universal for all opaque objects, which is why it is called ambient. The ambient term is used even in shadows like this one. The diffuse term represents light that comes directly from a light source and is emitted equally in all directions. Diffuse reflections exist for objects with rough surfaces like a painted wall or a piece of wood. Along this wall, we can see the variation of the diffuse component. The specular term represents light that is directly reflected from a surface. Specular reflection exists on smooth surfaces like glass or metal. The only specular reflection in this scene comes from this glass sphere. As we see here, the position changes with the observer. To better illustrate the ambient, diffuse, and specular reflections, consider this simple surface with the light directly above it. For this surface, we use all three components together to make a surface that looks somewhat like smooth, hard plastic. The ambient term is just a constant and is the color of the underlying material. The ambient term alone looks like this. The diffuse term models light that hits the surface directly and is reflected equally in all directions. The diffuse term is also the color of the material, but the intensity varies according to how directly the light is hitting the surface. To explain this phenomena, consider this wall which is being illuminated by light rays. The light rays are represented by arrows. As the wall turns, fewer rays hit the surface, so the light reflection is dimmer. Here's how the diffuse term looks by itself. Finally, the specular term models light that is reflected off smooth surfaces. The specular reflection is the color of the light which is almost always white. Specular reflections are directional and depend on the position of both the light and the viewer. Often light sources are modeled as points. If we only used a single direction, all the specular highlights would appear as single points. However, real lights tend to be round with substantial area. To more realistically model a light source's specular reflection, we use a cone of light around our reflection vector. This gives us a broader highlight. Here's what our specular highlights look like. Adding the ambient, diffuse, and specular components together, we get our original surface, which looks like this. Now we can increase the width of our cone of reflection for our specular highlights. If we do this, our surface looks softer, somewhat like satin. The width of the specular highlight is often modeled in a term referred to as shininess, since a narrower highlight makes the surface look shinier. This concludes the lesson.